Hi, my name is Grant. Thank you for watching the EZC2 series product video. Today we'll be discussing the general technical specifications of the EZ Cylinder 2 series product as well as the overall features. So the EZC2 series is a motorized linear actuator or motorized cylinder. It incorporates a closed loop stepping motor system with a ball screw and a ball nut uh, coupled together uh, to the motor which generates linear motion. And you can see in this diagram we have our closed loop stepping motor coupled to the, the ball screw. Now the ball screw is actually in a fixed position. As the ball screw rotates it interacts with the ball nut which ball nut, the, where the ball nut is actually attached to this uh, cylinder. The cylinder is coupled to an anti-spin bushing which then protrudes the cylinder in and out from the actuator. This is what generates linear motion. The overall uh, specifications of the EZC2 series, um, again, it's a, a, the driven method is a ball screw. Uh, we have a, a stroke option of 50 up to 300 millimeters. It can achieve a maximum speed of 600 millimeters per second. It has a maximum transportable mass capability of up to 60 kilograms horizontal, 30 kilograms vertical. It has a repetitive positioning accuracy of plus or minus 0.02 millimeters. It's also capable of achieving a maximum thrust force of 400 newtons. Now, since this cylinder uh, it just uses the basic bushing as a guide, it is not rated for any moment loads. Um, for a moment load ra rated cylinder, you would actually want to consider the EZA series. However, if you're using an external guide, the EZC2 series will be suitable for your application. Now, the EZ Cylinder 2 is available in two different frame sizes, uh, the EZC4 as well as the EZC6. Now, we have DC24 uh, input voltage option available. Uh, we have also have AC input 100 to 115, as well as 200 to 230 volt AC single phase. Now, depending on the frame size or the input voltage, the performance may vary. One thing to note about the EZC2 series, um, it does use the QZ lubrication system um, that is offered from THK. We do use THK ball screws and uh, ball nuts. It's also equipped with vibration suppression function. So at lower speeds, if you refer to this chart below, you can see that we're going to have, tend to have a lot lower vibration than some of the other products out on the market. Now at this time I'd actually like to introduce a, a live demonstration that we have with us today. So this is an EZC6 size cylinder um, with a 50 millimeter stroke. Um, it uses a 6 millimeter pitch. Now this unit is capable of achieving very smooth motion as well as very fast motion. So I'll go ahead and run a profile right now which actually indexes by about 5 millimeters at a time up to the 50 millimeters. And it runs at a speed at 30 millimeters per second. I'm going to go ahead and start that motion now. Again it's indexing 5 millimeters at a time. I'll go ahead and run that profile again. Not only can we do smooth motion, but we can also perform very quick acting motion. So what happened in this profile, we index at 10 millimeters at a rate of about 300 millimeters per second. We then went back and forth at about 400 millimeters per second um, from the 50 to the zero position and then indexed uh, by about 5 millimeters. I'll go ahead and run that profile again. So 
So again, considering the, the overall construction of the actuator, we have the motor towards the back portion. Internally, we have the ball, uh, the ball screw and a ball nut, which is uh, basically guided through an, with an anti-spin bushing. And then we have the cylinder uh, operation coming out here. Now, at the end, we have a threaded rod where you can attach a load directly to this rod. And we also have a, a face mount capability with four tapped holes up here at the front. One major advantage of the Easy Cylinder 2 Series is the space saving advantage. Um, depending on the frame size we're dealing with, we can typically take uh, the stroke of the actuator and add an extra 185 millimeters will be the entire length of the cylinder. So it is fairly compact and, and more often than not can fit into some pretty tight uh, situations. So the part number breakdown of the Easy Cylinder um, again, we have the four frame size, which is going to be 42 by 42 millimeter, and the six frame size, which will be 60 by 60 millimeter. We have a 12 millimeter pitch option or a 6 millimeter pitch option for ball screw. And we have a stroke range of 50 millimeters all the way up to 300 millimeters. And we move up in increments of 50. Now we have magnetic brake options available for all of these uh, options. And then we have the voltage input capability of 24 volt DC, single phase 100 to 115, or single phase 200 to 230 volt AC. Another advantage of the, of the cylinder product is the push motion operation. Effectively what the push motion operation is limiting the amount of output force that the actuator can exert. Once it reaches that set amount of output force, we can then output the T-up output, which lets the master controller know that it's reached that force. The cylinder is also capable of outputting an area output, which is a set distance between two points. So for in this example, uh, we have an application where we need to press uh, an object into place. By utilizing both the area and T-up output, uh, we can effectively know whether or not the operation has been successful by the logic levels of those two outputs. So we can see here that when both the area and the T-up output, the operation has been successful. It's unsuccessful when the area output is off or the T-up output has been off. So the overall system configuration um, each actuator is going to come with a drive slash controller. To utilize the features of the data store type controller, you can consider the Easy T1 teaching pendant to program it, or the Easy ED2 data editing software to program the unit. For more information on the common controller, please view the common controller video. We also have the capability of running in a straight driver mode. And essentially what this is is accepting a pulse and direction input from a step or from a, a motion controller or a PLC, much similar to that of a stepping motor. It would then take and interpret that signal to generate linear motion. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us at 1-800-468-3982 or email us at techsupport at My name is Grant. And thank you for watching.